It's a new year. It's a new video. We're going to show you all the games that I beat for January 2023. So let's get started. So the very first game that I beat was Crash Bandicoot The Huge Adventure for Game Boy Advance. I hadn't played this game in a very long time. This was one of the games, plus Tekken Advanced is why I got a Game Boy Advanced. I got this one, powered it up on the emulator, and decided, you know what, I'm kind of tired. Uh, for those who don't know, my two dogs hate fi fireworks for some reason. The loud booms scared them, and I was up really, really early in the morning, and I had nothing to do. So I was waiting for a couple people to wake up, and I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna play a game. Crash Bandicoot Huge Adventure was on my list of, let's play it again, I haven't played it forever. It's a couple hours of fun. Uh, I like it better than the second one. The second one's more about flying. This one's actually about platforming. So you pop it in, you jump through, you do your thing. Same characters, you're battling Cortex, you're battling all the characters you got from the PlayStation games. So it's not anything different, but the mechanics are a little off. Um, so if you're used to jumping and, and you get to a certain point in the edge of the platform, you gotta make sure you're a little bit farther back because you gotta slide and do all that stuff. I, I miscalculated and got used to it, but yeah, it was a fun time. After Crash, I decided to play a backlog game and this is called Hot Pixel. Uh, this is kind of like WarriorWare meets uh, some like animated stuff. So basically it's a bunch of mini games, a lot of mini games put together and you'll have a time limit and you have to complete or pass so many in each level to get to the next level and it's a little bit of a story mode not much it's just some guy who tells you yay you won or yay you lost and it's mostly about a skateboarder <laughs> like i think they just got a buddy of theirs to or some guy that they knew to just be the guy he he kind of looks a little like late late 90s early 2000s skater and he just there's just weird but I didn't mind him. Uh, the mini games were not bad. <laughs> the mini games were fun. Uh, there was a couple that I didn't understand at all. Like I looked through the manual, I didn't see anything that made sense to me. So I kind of just guessed and then I finally figured it out. But yeah, you just gotta guess on some of them and then just battle through. But the fun part was all the weird shenanigans from the cutscenes. So just enjoy the cutscenes and you'll you'll have a good time with that one. After that, I decided to play an indie fighter and it's Supernatural Super Squad Fight. I hope I said that correctly. Uh, it's an indie fighter that's free on Xbox. I don't know if it's free on PlayStation or Steam, but basically you're fighting as Bigfoot, uh, which all the, all the medieval people and mythology people, uh, anything that has like Loch Ness Monster, stuff like that, you fight as them. It's kind of like Smash Bros, but only with two characters, and as you're battling, you see that the characters have special abilities, and they can fly up, and you don't really have the ability to fall off of stuff. You just keep battling until you run out of stamina or energy or whatever, and then you're screwed. So, it's an okay fighter. It's about an hour or two max. Like, it's not really that long. I played with a couple of characters, and then once I was done, I was like... I'm kind of bored, so if you want to try a free game, a free fighter, try it out, but I wouldn't go and pay money for that one. Next is a game, it's another indie itch.io game where I was on this kick of watching Games I Beat videos, and this one person, his name is Max Miller, sent me on a quest. He was like, I made a video game, find it try it out. I challenge you. I'm not going to even put it in the description. Go find it. So I found his Twitter and I just popped in the Twitter and I looked at all the retweets and I saw there was a company that he kept retweeting. I was like, that's probably the company that made the game. That's probably his game. So I looked and the game is called Commonplace and it's basically a four hour game so for those who don't know, most indie games or most games that say, hey, please do this all in one sitting, it, the experience is better, it's usually about an hour, at the most, two hours. So I like the game. The game was fun. It's, it's a point and click light puzzle adventure game where it's mostly about puzzles. 
you are a character named Sam and your character, it works in an office and it's very slow to start. You basically are just doing office jobs where you're, you look like you're crunching numbers. So you might be an engineer or an accountant of some kind and you have a bunch of your coworkers and it's basically the mundane of do this, go here, back to back, same thing. And every now and then you'll see or notice something that is a little off place or a little weird, like a chair is moved to a different location. I didn't think anything of it, so I was like, whatever. And then Sam, the character, would be like, something's off. I don't understand this. What's going on? So if you're wanting to stop and play a game that's about four hours, make sure you do it on a day that's your day off. If you're watching this and you are part of that team for this game ever, like you come across my video, please put on there that it could be up to five hours because there is moments of puzzles that made no sense and there is no walkthrough, no manual, no help, no no hints other than what you find. And if you miss the, the item that is from a previous map, you are gonna be struggling with that puzzle and you have to figure it out in order to move in advance. Little things like that, like just, I don't care if the puzzles are hard. I don't care if it's a point and click and it's gonna frustrate me. But if you're gonna tell me to do this in all in one sitting, you need to warn people that your game is averaging for most players about four hours because what if I didn't have four hours and there is no save. You cannot save in this game. The reason why is because you're supposed to do it all in one sitting. And if I get stuck and I just have to leave or my, my PC gets shut off in some weird reason, I lost all that progress and I probably as a character like be like eh, I don't know where I'm at I don't remember what I'm doing I'll just bounce as a gamer <laughs> being real your game is fun max but you gotta make sure you tell people that it's up to four hours because I looked at like the itch.io character like uh, review board and a lot of people are like oh yeah it's about three hours for me about four hours for me about five hours for me and there is no end credits just FYI I got to this point where I couldn't get up from something I couldn't do something like I made a choice I was like there's no ending there's no credits no roll of anything like it's just sitting there for hours I'm like I, I let the, the thing go for like 45 minutes I'm like what can I do and I guess my choice just left me there what I did so just warning if you pick a choice at some point and it's done that's the end of the game <laughs> so that's all I'm telling you like that's what made my game five hours because like I was done in about four hours ish and I stopped to eat at one point, so it's probably like three and a half, but just fair warning about commonplace. Do not, do not be doing this on your day that you're doing a lot of stuff. Next game is a mobile game that was very popular about four or five years ago. I can't remember exact times, but it's called Sarah is Missing. This is an FMV game. It's very, very reminiscent of a couple other games that I know from like Alice is Missing and a couple other shows and movies where you f find a phone. It's kind of like a lot of the games that I've played in the past. You find a phone, you don't know what this phone is about. You start scrolling through it. You gotta figure out puzzles, different things like that. And then you start getting weird messages from some random group of people. And they're telling you to do bad things. And the program that is in the phone is like, please, please, that's my human. Help my human. Please don't let my human die. Help my human. And so you have to make the choice of do you help your human or do you help that person? What's going on? So you have to make choices. If you do the wrong choices, the phone gets mad and then stops the game and then you have a bad ending. But if you go all the way through, make all the right choices, you will get not a good ending. I didn't like it. The ending was not good <laughs> at all. I didn't really get the ending. I didn't understand it. So the game is amazing. The ending is horrible. I'm not going to ruin it for anybody who's never played the game, but you could just look online. There's a bunch of YouTubers who play this game and yeah, it's a very short game. It's like an hour or less. If you want to play it a couple times, you might get a little bit longer, but yeah, each playthrough took me about an hour. Month was like a handheld kick. <laughs> I was in like a handheld, like I want to try this game and that game. But the next game is Fatal Fury Special for the Game Gear. I had not played this fighter and I was just bored and I wanted to play a couple fighters. I was on a fighter kick and I decided, you know what? 
let's go through the list of Game Gear. Let's see what there is. And sure enough, there was a fighter that I've never tried and I really wanted to try it. I like this one. It's a good one. It's uh, basically you are all the characters for Fatal Fury. And it's the buttons are okay. Um, you do have to use a directional pad a little bit more because there's only two buttons. There's nothing for, you know, anything else but that. So I liked what they did with the story. It's not bad. It's a normal what you do for Fatal Fury. So if you heard the story a hundred times, I'm not going to bore you with it. But I did choose my normal characters that I always fight with and I liked it. Good time. After that, I wanted to play a Neo Geo Pocket Color game, was deciding on what I wanted to play, and I stopped on The Last Blade Beyond the Destiny. This is a Last Blade game. It's a fighter. It's kind of like Samurai Showdown a little bit, where a lot of the characters have blades and you can fight your way through. I like the story. It was a very good story. Um, it did kick my butt. <laughs> the ending was very difficult. Uh, the end battle was really fun, but I enjoyed the story. I recommend to anybody, if you never played a Last Blade game, which I have not, and I was surprised, I looked and I was like, I thought I did a Last Blade game, but no, I didn't. So I'm going to try to see if I can find more. I think there was on PlayStation Pass, there is a Last Blade game, so definitely worth your time. If you have Neo Geo Pocket Color or an emulator, definitely try this one out for sure. Fun fighter. So the next game is a handheld game again, and it's called Bratz. It's kind of like Dance Dance Revolution, where you have arrows that your character has to hit for the concerts, and you have to keep doing really well in your performances to get to the end of the story. You get just like a, yay, you did really good, try the next character. I was like, I'm not going to try the next character. I did all this. It's kind of like Barbie. You want to build up your character career and that's it. It's like, nah, I'm good. I'm not going to go any farther. That's that's all I'm going to get is one character for me. It's a Bratz game. It's not the best game in the world, but it's not horrible, I guess, in my opinion. But you might be saying, no, I'm never trying a Bratz game. But it could be a guilty pleasure, I guess. After that, I decided to play a Switch game. Uh, I had a bunch of games that I wanted to play and it was called One Night Stand. Basically, it's a game where you are waking up in a bed and you don't know where you are. You have had a party last night and I guess you found some random stranger, don't know who she is, and you wake up and you're like, oh great, <laughs> I gotta figure out what's going on with this. And the one thing that I did was I got every ending because it's very easy. You can literally just walk out on her and just be done and then that's the end of the game. And it's like, I wanted some challenge because there's like nobody can die, nothing can happen, it's just a puzzle game. So I tried multiple weird things. I tried stuff like uh, play the guitar that she has in her room, open up her laptop, find stuff in her wallet, different things like that. So if you want to try the puzzle game, it literally is just a puzzle game and see what all the stuff that that has. Yeah, get all the endings. It's not a bad game. It's not horrible, but it's not like an amazing game. It's an indie game. I supported the indie game because... I did want to try it, but go pay a lot. Pay like five bucks or less for this one. Again, another handheld game, and that is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Movie. I had played this on stream, but it bested me, so I wanted to go back and finally beat the game. So I took my time and I battled through. I figured out the ending, and actually I was very close to the end. I literally, if I had beaten the second form of the character, I would have been done. And I didn't know that, so I was like, let me keep going. And when I did beat it, I was like, yay! So I did play as Tommy. I kept the, the, the game going as Tommy because I wanted to show respect to, to our our Tommy, for sure. So yeah, it's a fun game. It's a fun beat em up I, I recommend it. I love the story because it follows the timeline of the movie 100%. Ivan Ooze is a really badass boss. He is difficult, very hard to beat. And the final battle was just exactly like if you were to play either the Genesis game or the Super Nintendo game or the Game Gear, the first one. The last battle is always the worst because it's two forms. So definitely worth the time. I recommend it. All my Power Ranger fans, try this one out. After that, another handheld game, and I'm going to have to read this title because this one is very difficult to remember. It is The Match of the Millennium, SNK versus Capcom. This is a great fighter. Basically, you are getting Capcom versus SNK, and it's handheld, and it basically it is with another Neo Geo Pocket Color game. Um, 
This one had a very difficult ending. You battle both of the bosses. When I saw Bison, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I have, it was like, um, back to back to back battles. It was kind of like Mortal Kombat, <laughs> which is really, really hard where they have you fight your doppelgangers. So you'll fight the, the characters you already fought, but they're harder and more difficult. So all the characters that were worse in the list, you'll get them again, back to back three of them. And if you can't keep going, you'll, you'll have to redo it. And then the, having both of the, the bosses from SNK and Capcom come in and battle me. And then I had to survive and have enough life for the second person because they would alternate it. If one time it's it's Bison first and then second time is Bison second. And then you're like, oh, I'm done. Whew. And then you're like, no, I'm not done. There's one more boss at the very end. You're like, oh, I give up <laughs> at the very end. I was struggling. This was a hard fighter. I recommend all my fighter buddies who have played uh, like every fighter find this on a ROM emulator or find this on Neo Geo Pocket Color. This is a badass fighter. It will challenge you to your core. You will be battling and yelling at the screen and all that stuff. So highly recommend this fighter. I, I had a good time with this one. So I went back to the Switch and I saw the new list of games they put on the Genesis and I was like, Virtual Fighter 2! I've been wanting to play this game forever, but I didn't want to pay what it was going for. I like Virtual Fighter, but I'm not going to pay a lot of money for a game. So when I saw it there, I was like, hell yeah, I, I wanted to try this forever. So I popped it in, tried it, and it's very fun. The weird thing though is the throws literally will you'll be in the middle of the ring and if a guy or a gal grabs you and throws you you'll be at the very edge of the ring so just watch out for the throws that's the only thing that can knock you out like just block learn how to block in the fighter and you'll be fine so i recommend for anybody who's ever played a, a virtual fighter game blocking is your friend and stay away from the edge of the ring if they throw you hop over them and put them at the edge of the ring and then you can just knock them out and be done. So I highly recommend that for sure. After that, I sticked with the Switch and I went to the N64. I've been playing Dr. Mario 64 for a while. This has been a, several months of play a few levels, try to beat it and not get very far and then try again, keep going, getting better, getting better, getting better, trying to keep going. So I recommend if you love Dr. Mario, Dr. Mario 64 is a very fun game. It's actually kind of like Puyo Puyo Tetris, um, where you're battling another character and you have to beat them and the very end gets very difficult. The story is Dr. Morrow's vitamins have been stolen by the boss that's at the very end and that person is sick. <laughs> so that character is sick. You have to fix that character after you find out why they stole the vitamins for everybody. and that they're not a bad person, they're just not feeling good and they wanted all the vitamins for themselves and that's why they keep running away but at a slow pace and they're having people help them because those people are like, oh yeah, we'll help you because you're sick, let me get you. But you don't know that, you just think that it's a bad person. So I recommend it, it's a fun story and I have played it through and enjoyed it. Just very, very challenging at the end. Another Switch game, I kept going with Switch and this one was on stream. I beat this whole game on stream. It's another game that you need to play it all in one sitting. It's called A Short Hike. Very fun game. I've seen this on several people's list for 2019, 2020, and 2021. This game is a knock out of the park. This game was so much fun. So basically you are a little bird who is going on a trip, a hike with your aunt and you want to call your mom to tell your mom that you're okay, but there's no cell phone reception. You don't know where to go. So you have to go hike up all the mountain to get to the top, but you have to get feathers, golden feathers. So what do you have to do? You have to help other people to give you golden feathers or find them along the trail. I love this game. This game was a very fun game. I had a blast playing it through. The ending was super cute, sweet, it's a 10 out of 10 for me. This game was one of the games that I really enjoyed. So if you find a short hike, it's on sale a lot of the times. Try it out. You're going to have a fun time with it. It's, it's a cute little indie game worth your time. And I went to an arcade and the next and last game that I finished was Wild West Cowboys of Moo Mesa. This is an arcade game that I've been wanting to play for a very long time, but nobody really had this in their arcade. It's kind of like a Contra shooter, but a little bit easier. Um, I Not a lot of credits. I beat this and I was like, wow, 
I didn't spend a lot of credits, so we're gonna add this to the list. You are playing the characters from the, the cartoon. It's basically based off of a cartoon, which I didn't really get to see the cartoon, so I don't know all the characters or what the storyline is. Basically, like, a, you're saving a damsel in distress who's kidnapped by this other character, the main boss, and you have to go save her. So I enjoyed it. It's a shooter, run and gun shooter. You uh, battle through and you get to the very end and each level has a boss. And I love that you can choose which way you want to go. It's not like next one, next one, next one. It's like, oh, I feel like this one's going to be easier. Let me do this one first. Or this one looks easier. So let me, or I'm going to do this last because this, this boss is a lot harder. So let me do this first because this boss, I couldn't figure out the pattern right away. But if I had it on the first level, be easier for me. So I recommend it. The characters were hilarious. I love the characters and a lot of people know this car cartoon so I need to find it and watch it. But yeah, that is pretty much every game I've beaten for January. Let me know. What are the games that you beat for January? What were your highlights? Are you keeping track? I've seen a lot more people doing the monthly thing and there's a lot of people that used to do it and they're back to do it again. So I beat 15 games for this month. I had a fun time. It was a handheld fighter game, indie game month. So what was your January for gaming? Was it a shooter? Was it platformer? Let me know. And I'll catch you all next time. Thank you so much for chilling with me and watching my video. Give it a like. If you're new, hit the sub button. Helps out the channel. And bye, everybody. the gamer gal she's here she's playing games linda the gamer gal she's here she's playing games today